extra, extra, read all about it. This is your romantic tarot. So yes, welcome to Born Without Boundaries. Um, please do click subscribe and uh, help the channel grow. And also ring that bell so that you know when I upload all the new content. This is a full zodiac spread. So I will be time stamping each of the zodiac signs. These are your romance and love and sensuality predictions for the week ahead. It'll, the message comes to you whenever it's supposed to come to you. But if you want it hot off the press, it comes out to you every single Sunday. So I do one of these videos weekly. Um, feel free to play with this video because the timestamps are there for you to do just that. The signs that you should really be paying attention to when it comes to your romantic life, please don't limit it to your sun signs. What you should be looking at primarily is your sun, your moon, your Venus, and your Mercury. Now, if you know about enough about your partner to know where their Venus or their Mars is and see how compatible it is with your rising sign, then please do look rising sign too. But at the very least, you should be checking your sun and your moon sign. And I think Venus and Mercury are, Mercury are really important as well because that will help to, to tell you about a little, give you a little insight into how they communicate and what they want out of love and how they express their love. So uh, just just a little bit of a guidance, just a little bit of advice, because I know a lot of people go right to their sun sign, and that's really not enough information. Now, I always make an extended reading too. So we start with Oracle card readings here, and we'll go into the general love and romance uh, energies that are surrounding each specific zodiac energy. Um, but in the extended, we'll go into who is coming toward you. So if you're curious about their energies or the energies of the person that you're dealing with, maybe what they're going through, a little bit of insights into what they're going through, or if you're totally single, who this person would be like, etc., etc., we'll go into depth of that person over in the extended. So that link is below and please do head on over there. Let's get into the reading. We're going to start with Scorpio. Yes, I do always take, <laughs> I'll be taking the timestamps down the whole time. Um, Scorpio, 226. Let's get into it. I have premeditated on these cards. I have sound cleansed these cards. Um, I have prayed over these cards and um, they're all ready for you. So let's get into the messages. Um, Scorpio. believe in the impossible. Um, I know that that's difficult. And every time I get this card, I always ask the viewers, what do you see? Do you see the bubble about to pop? Or do you see it rising as if it's bubbling up? Do you see the moon as if it's about to burst? Or do you see it as if it's rising? Now, if you see it as if it's rising, then something is growing, something is expanding, something is just up and coming or something is developing. And if you see it about to burst, then something needs releasing, something needs to be letting go, or it's coming to fruition and it's about to rain all over you. So it could be good or bad energy. The energy is just sort of exploding all over you and it's about to come to fruition there is a release in this energy but the ultimate meaning of this card is believe in the impossible so what is the impossible what do you think would never happen in a million years now for me this is an energy of what you guys have been feeling in terms of love is impossible or it's never going to happen to me or uh, that we're at an impasse in our relationship i just like there's there's nothing I, I don't know which way which way is forward i don't know i don't know if we can get past this or it seems like something is coming that's insurmountable um or in some situations they have made you believe in the impossible because this is a romance that is beyond your imagination and you can't believe that you actually found it either way those scorpios you're advanced you're ahead but what i'm saying to the rest of you is that's where you're going to be that's what this energy means scorpio that something so amazing and so wonderful is coming to you that it will be impossible for you to have predicted. So this is an encouragement. This is a message of encouragement. I can't tell you the time. I can't tell you when, but I can tell you it's destined. 
That's the message that you're supposed to receive. Yes, the impossible is happening. And I really do believe it's very, very close to you right now, a circumstance or a situation that it just, it, I'm telling you, you're not going to be able to, you can feel it. You'll be definitely be able to feel it but you will not be able to predict it. You will not be able to decide it. You will not be able to know that it's coming or even see it coming and it's going to surprise you. And I have to say, that's part of the beauty. Love makes the difference. Love helps heal past hurts and provides a sense of security and self-worth. It's traveling right now. It's traveling to get to you. You could be at a distance from a lover or you could be traveling right now. Actually, I don't think a lot of people are traveling anywhere right now. It means time. Time is moving. Time is traveling. Time is traveling and bringing the two of you together. But what the message of this card is simply that it would you could traverse time. You could traverse space. Um, this love is a love that is coming to you, a, a relationship that is coming to you that is has... Uh, has uh, surmounted time and space and even practicalities. This is something impossible happening that is realized. Love conquers everything and it can, it can even jump lives. So believe me when I tell you this, this is the impossible girl or impossible guy. This is the impossible situation, Scorpio, that is coming to you. And I do believe it's been on its way for a while. In other words, it's been out to delivery. <laughs> But depending on your experience, Scorpio, it you it could have because I almost feel like some of you said this as I was as I was thinking as I was saying it. There was like this psychic message that came to me like uh, I think mine got lost in the mail. And that's true. And it could have got lost in the mail. It could have been redirected, misdirected, gone to the wrong address. There are so many different things in life that come up and just really screw us up. But ultimately, it is still getting to you. And there's an arrive. That's why you think it's impossible. You may have even given up on it. But it's not impossible. It's not. And it's coming to you. Because love stands the test of time. And love works it out. And love will find you and figure it out. But the wonderful, beautiful... And I'm really excited by this energy. And let me tell you why. Because the wonderful, beautiful thing about this is, in some ways, you... You're giving up has has made you stronger. It's made you look at look at things that are in front of you more and focus on what you can control. And and when we forget, when we forget to ask, when we just up uh, is when we open ourselves to allowing, because our mind isn't getting in our way. And that's why I love it. This is an energy of liberation for you to get your mind in that question: when, when, who, who, why hasn't it happened? Why hasn't it happened? out of your way and then this is a love that has stood, this, has stood the test of time now it doesn't have to necessarily has stood the test of time let me finish my thought it has stood the test of time and it has finally arrived so you may know this person already this may be somebody that you had dated or been with a while ago or this is somebody that you were with in past lives and you've never met in this lifetime yet or somebody new either way they were preparing for you and they were lost in the mail just like you were. And they were thinking and feeling and wondering when the heck were you going to arrive to? And guess what? You lived your lives. You carried on. And carrying on was part of your journey in delivery. And bada bing, bada boom. I'm telling you right now, it's coming to fruition. Now, who is coming towards you? Who is this person? What is their circumstance? What is the situation? Where, what is the situation? What are they thinking or feeling? That's in the link below. That's in the who's coming towards you. I will see you guys in the extended. Sagittarius. Sagittarius. We have two cards that popped out for you. So let me give you the combined meaning. A new romantic cycle begins and what do you need to release? So there is definitely a conclusion and a new beginning. Or this is telling me that there is a sense of something new, something new starting in your romantic life. It could be something new starting in an old romance, a new situation or a new circumstance that you and your love lover are up against. 
Either way, there is something new beginning, but there is a question here of what kind of baggage are you holding on to that will or is already getting in the way? Something, something, some kind of stress, some kind of strain, some kind of emotional tether is pulling you back or maybe there's an attachment to a past lover. There is a potential here for a new lover, but there is an attachment to an old one or there's something, even if you're in a happy marriage, there's some sort of issue coming out of your past that is kind of impeding. You may not even have, have even told your, your current relationship about this yet this is and that's not because you're trying to be secretive just because you don't know what to make of it you just know in some ways emotionally it's messing you up so this is a sense of a beautiful relationship happening a beautiful beginning oh it's like somebody that gives to you this is a card libra energy somebody who's really all about partnership who really cares who communicates well who gives as much as you give this is that balance that balancing and this is something that is essentially you're holding on to from the past and what that could do is impede this balance impede this beauty impede you from really opening yourself up to everything that this new potential relationship is or this new circumstance or situation is i do feel a lot of love here so at least in most cases there is an acknowledgement sagittarius that there is a potential here that there is something good that you, or you know there's something good and you want to keep making it work but something i don't know if you just got a call from an ex or for some reason they popped up in your head or um there's just baggage that you have inside of you and you've been looking out of the corner of your eye like i remember when so and so did that to me and you're starting to compare your current person whether the, even if they're nothing like your old person, you're starting to compare them to it. So there, there's something there that really, I think, could be very easily solved if you just talk about it. If you, if you just let it out and don't let it bog you down or hold you back, this could be easily solved. Because there is a wonderful sense of um, um, allowing your past to inform your current circumstance and situation, but not allowing it to control it. And there's a, there's something that you have to confront. There is, there's something that you're dealing with now. It is, could very well be literal in that if you had a partnership that in deal, dealt with any legal legalities like divorce or um, separation, custody, or um, um, uh, dividing assets, like, any, like real legal 3D chaos, <laughs> um, it's still going on. There's a sense of that that justice system inter like intervening in your life or causing some sort of stress or trying to figure out practicalities of some sort of legal issues. Maybe you're looking for a mortgage or you're trying to figure out whose name goes on it or how, how you divide. You know, like there there could be something like that, but there is a sense of um issues, yes, issues. But there, there are issues that you could deal with as long as you talk to each other. However, if you are frightened, if you get scared, if you are worried about the way that your partner will react or you're holding on and just projecting old hurt onto everybody new you meet and you continue to do that and you don't confront there will be bigger issues. But the wonderful, beautiful part of this message, Sagittarius, is that doesn't, it doesn't have to get that far. If you just confront and speak of and allow, allow yourself to acknowledge what is pushing you. A lot of times, the caveat of being a fire sign, because there's so many wonderful aspects of being a fire sign, but one of the caveats is you just want to move on to the next thing and you don't spend long enough on emotions sometimes, and then they end up creeping up on you and getting the best of you because anything that you don't acknowledge ends up controlling you. And that's not what you want to allow to happen. As irritating and frustrating as it is, nip this in the butt because there's something really beautiful going on or a potential for a new start and somebody that actually wants to be a good partner to you. And 
there's so much beauty that you don't want to impede by any BS that could easily be thrown away if you just give yourself a second to sift through things. So what are they? Oh, no, no, wait, stop. Be in the present and dream of the future. So this is all about synchronicity. This is all about the timing is right. This test, it's almost like a test that has come to you at the right time, or this partner has finally come to you. Is your past going to dictate your future or are you gonna allow yourself to be in the present moment? Now, for most of you, I feel like you're being pulled by the present moment. I feel like there's a lot of synchronicities and you know how freaking lucky you are. Now, some of you may be way up, like high vibe and totally advanced and be like, using that past that's come back up to remind yourself of just how lucky you are now and feel really good about what you have right now. You use it as an inspiration to celebrate what you acknowledge, the amazing, the amazing union that you acknowledge having in your life right now. Like that is like the best case scenario um, for others. It's time to confront something. Why? Because you gotta take out the garbage to make room for something new that's coming in. It's time. Something new wants to approach you, wants to come in and satisfy you and love you and wrap its arms around you. But are you holding on to something from the past or is it trying to hold on from you? Now, normally Sagittarius, you don't hold on to things from the past, right? But what I'm saying is a part of your past might have crept up that you didn't expect and it took you off guard, which is why it's throwing you a little bit. Nip it in the butt and confront it. It's time. So who are you dealing with and what did they call you for or what do they want from you or this new partnership how are they feeling and, and what how are they reacting to how you're acting toward them all of that information is in the extended video let's look into that together who is coming towards you please click that link below Sagittarius I'll talk to you next week Capricorn this is all about your love, romance, and sensual cycles and energies for the next week or so. So remembering there's always an extended if you're curious about who's coming towards you or what your partner is going through. Capricorn. Yep, we had two energies for you. You are good enough. So there has been a diminished sense of self. A sense of self that really needs healing, growing, and cultivating, and the faith of a mother energy that will never give up even when things get dark. So there is dark times implied by this card because this is the energy of Virgo, which is very Demeter energy, who was Persephone's mother. And Demeter had to deal every single winter with Persephone being whisked away and forced to live in hell. And Demeter, of course, then bought on the winter because she was so hurt. She stopped allowing things to grow. So there is a sense of maybe dealing with dark times and struggling with that sense of self-esteem that is so essential to find love and be in love and participate in healthy relationships. You and your loved ones are safe, new moon and cancer. So there is a healing energy here. Both of these energies, very loving, very nurturing, very maternal. There's a lot of divine feminine all up in here. It's letting go of the sense of it's letting go of that sense of yourself that is getting in the way of you being able to heal and feel protected and safe. Understand, there's a clash here. Virgos, Virgo, this is Virgo energy. They have a they have a tendency to worry a great deal because they nitpick and they look at the details and it starts to cultivate paranoia in their mind. This is Cancerian energy of wanting to be all accepting, all encompassing, and just take it, heal, heal, take it all in. And and love regardless and no matter what so it's your choice Capricorn are you going to go with the paranoia are you going to go with the fear are you going to go with the tedium are you going to go with what is making you feel bad and hurting you or are you going to go with the faith of is everybody that I love and that loves me are they safe are they protected are they cared for this is you being very wanting to be very caring but not feeling wanting to be very caring wanting to give somebody something but not feeling like you're good enough not feeling like you have enough tangible resources 
for this person or to have this person in your life, not feeling like you even deserve to have them in your life, but you want them. And what you're not realizing Capricorn is um, just this uh, want to fulfill, what just this want to nurture and to provide for and take care of is what should be impressing your partner right now is what what they need or what they should want if what the right person will want so a sense of you not being good enough is really um maybe might it, might it might end up sticking you in the wrong relationship because if you keep trying like like you feel like being in a relationship with somebody that you have to prove yourself to which cancerians do all the time it's not it, that's not good energy this is about releasing a sense of not being good enough of not feeling good enough and always wanting to um um uh and and always uh trying too hard essentially that's the energy i don't know if you're trying too hard in your current relationship or you just feel like you every time you try nothing ever comes to full fruition um or not or nobody cares enough or, or nobody ever thinks that you're good enough this is this is a compromised sense of self-esteem that's exactly what this is you are limitless comes up so that once again, that message from the universe that you need to hear right now is life is good. You have more than you think you do. Stop sizing up the dollars and cents right now. This is Aquarius energy, but we'll get into the signs of who you might be dealing with. We'll get into that in the who's coming towards you. But ultimately Capricorn, you can do anything you choose. So this is the energy of spirit coming through and saying, this is magical. You have it. Your life is blessed, even if you're not recognizing it. But please start recognizing it because these are both energies of really feeling set upon and energies that could cause you to get into either a bad relationship with a person who sort of massages your ego or not not see just the bounty of what you have in your life already because you're you're moving too fast and expecting too much from yourself and not allowing the love to come in so here you are limitless this is a unicorn situation somebody could be coming into your life that is really really special so special that you don't feel like you're good enough for them but how is that going to play out ultimately we want an equal par partner we want somebody who feels good about themselves and who likes being around us so if you don't feel like you're good enough because this person that's come into your life is so special you don't get that you're special too. You don't understand that that they would they wouldn't be interested in you if you weren't that interesting. You don't understand that. That's something that you're going to have to struggle with and fight fight through this week. Why? Because there really does seem to be a special person in your life. Somebody who loves and wants to care for you, wants to protect you, wants to provide, is sitting there trying to fill your cup all the time and you maybe not respecting it or not realizing it or not acknowledging it because you're too caught up in other worries, which ultimately lead back to a diminished sense of self-esteem. So let's see what your partner is going through. Let's see what they're thinking, what they're feeling, or who this person is that's coming towards you. That link is below. Capricorn, I will see you in the extended. Aquarius, let's get into your energies. Um, really interesting. Are you traveling somewhere? This is like leaving. A fiery climax approaches and your commitment is being tested. Um, how badly do you want this relationship? There's confrontation here. There's confrontation and a threat to move and a threat to leave. I don't know if this is your partner, which we'll get into in who's coming towards you, or it's you, but there is a sense of being very tempted to get out and leave or walk away or feeling very confrontational, very pent up, very argumentative. Um, um, being wary or being afraid that that's what's about to happen there is a lot of frustration here with aries here with this Air, aries energy a uh, fiery climax approaches this is a sense of this could also be like literally um 
tempted to cheat uh, or cheating going on, a sense of somebody creeping and that they have fiery climaxes that they've been keeping back from you or not talking about with you or not telling you things, um, a sense of you confronting somebody about what you think is going on, what you fear, um, and really laying in and being accusing toward them or them doing it to you because you can switch around all of these energies. This is just confrontation is going to be happening in terms of romance. There's a sense of words being spewed, blow ups and explosions happening. Listen, especially if you're quarantined with your partner, I wouldn't take this so personally right now. Everybody is getting testy. How much do you want to be with somebody? How much can you stay with one person? This is going to really test you because I think that you're uh, relationships Aquarius thrive on you being able to still feel free so you being able to still feel like you're in control of your own life but if somebody's constantly getting in your face all the time there could be extra pop off niche pop pop off -ness between the two of you and it's really getting on your nerves and testing you this is also a sense of be confronting or Confronting your own desires, confronting your own wants, um, really questioning if what you have right now, do you want it that bad? Now, this could also be a confrontation of, do you want your career that bad? How badly do you want it if it means that it could keep you from somebody that you love, that kind of energy? Um, but I think that it's more you really getting frustrated with somebody, Aquarius. It really is. Um, your commitment is being tested. So this is, you, you see in the negative space of this card, this is that traveler, almost that hermit energy. Um, and, and you see that the moon is, is only half lit. It's a half moon. So it's like the cup is half full or the cup is half empty, but the moon is half lit. And it's definitely a waxing, a waxing um, crescent. A, a waxing half moon. So if something is building, there's a tension that's maybe been building for a while. Um, um, maybe, maybe just leaving somebody and not even tell them like walking away from a circumstance or situation with not, without even confronting it. Oh, no, 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 there's going to be a confrontation here with this Aries energy. Something is bursting out. Something is maybe even accusations are flying Aquarius. Um, or finally, finally, what you feel is being revealed and you can't sneak around and you can't hide it anymore. Somebody may be confronting you about your real feelings for them, putting you on the spot, which will make you feel very uncomfortable. But simultaneously, if this is somebody that you want, it's almost that you need to go through this. Like you need to finally be forced to admit how much they how much they mean to you. And, and, and that's just almost a, a necessity to officiate or officialize that, that you're not going to leave or that you're going to stay or that you really do want this person is, hey, you better show me that you love me right now because I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired and I'm sick and tired of being patient. And this is just an outburst. And it's a wonderful energy that's really liberating to you. It will free you. It will either put you deeper into a better relationship because it's whole and complete because you could confront things together or it will set you free and set you on your way towards something that does deserve you. Either way, there's a lot of liberation coming to you. There's a lot of liberation in this confrontation, Aquarius. Um, um, hold on, hold on. Let's get into this, this next card. Choose love. Ooh, energy of two plus one, which is divine trinity. Um, holy body, mind, and spirit working together, a holy balance. Uh, you always have choice. Make yours with love. Uh, yeah, to me now, this card uh, speaks volumes um, and implies that um, you're you're gonna you're gonna be confronted, or you're gonna confront somebody and say, hey, like let your true feelings out and say you either love me or you have me now, or I'm walking away. A sense of you wanting the love in your life and you sticking up for it and standing up for it. And if given an ultimatum or a choice, almost like I said, you kind of need to be backed into this corner right now because it's like um, you know what I'm offering you. Do you understand how wonderful this op like 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 figuring out that 
even if things are getting really hard, even if things are getting a little bit brutal, you want to make this love work. You want to make this relationship work. You want to make this situation work. Um, some of you could feel like somebody's coming on too strong, but I don't think so. I think you actually need them to come on very strong. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, you need to really share your feelings and express yourself this week. You know what, Aquarius, I just think this is going to be really good for you. Almost like being shocked by somebody's emotional vomit all over you. But it's exactly what you needed to shake you awake and make you realize, I don't want to live without this person. I can't risk being without them anymore. That kind of energy. I wonder what they're feeling and thinking and what their perspective is. Aquarius, that messages and who's coming towards you the link is below and i hope to see you over there but before i leave i do want to just confront like think about this energy for a little second more um somebody's confronting somebody definitely there's a confrontation here maybe you thought people were creeping on you and ultimately you're coming to this confrontation, especially if you're in a long-term relationship, you're coming to this impasse of even if they even if they messed up, I still want them. I don't want anybody else. Um, so it's almost like I'm telling you I'm not going. You know, like that kind of energy of, well, you're going to have to choose to walk away from me. That kind of energy. Now, I don't know if it's coming from you or them, and we'll clarify that in the extended but that is definitely a sense of being confronted by the reality of how much a relationship or the possibility of a relationship means to you. Because you really, deep down inside, you want love. You want it. This is absolutely something that you want. But it's just, is this something that you can tolerate, is the question. Okay, Aquarius, I will definitely see you guys over in the extended. Talk to you soon. All right, Pisces, let's, oh, sorry about that unstable camera. Let's get right into your energy. We had two cards pop up for you. The energy is gaining momentum, Pisces. Drum roll, please. And prosperity lies ahead. What kind of hooking up are you guys doing in quarantine? I would really like to know. But you guys do really, really well on like chats and Skype relationships too because you'll let your fa your fantasies fill in the blanks. And a lot of times you can dream a relationship into being anyway. So that really lends itself to be very friendly uh, with long distance relationships or just meeting somebody over the internet. So Pisces, now that could be what's happening to you. I only say that because of quarantine. If it wasn't quarantine, this would just for me be saying, look at something is growing. Something is coming into your life that will grow and has holds a lot of excitement for you. It is tangible. It is real. It is not just imagined because Taurus energy is here, which is telling me that it is an actual 3D human being. It's not just a concept. It's not just a dream. It's not just a fairy tale. This is somebody that is for real and they're starting to show more affection to you or you're starting or your relationship is starting to blossom or you're starting to see more potential. This could also be about strategy of finding ways to move forward and start something new after a, a, an old life cycle is over. So a sense of being ready to move forward and move onward. Prosperity lies ahead, Taurus. The energy is gaining momentum. You having more courage to press forward. Feel good about yourself. Feel confident in yourself. And know that maybe this is a marathon, not a race. And not being afraid of that anymore. So even if you are completely single with no prospects on, on the horizon, the horizon itself is looking so beautiful and so comforting to you, Pisces that you're not even caring that much if you can't see what's ahead. Like in a dark moon, you still know the moon is there because you can feel it. You know its presence is there. Pisces, you are very connected to moon energy. So um, you, you can feel like something's on the horizon, that something is coming towards you. And I really feel this is a strong sense of confidence in you, knowing that it's coming. And I'm telling you, Pisces, you're going to be 100% correct. Something is coming towards you. 
this is this is not something that um this is a confirmation that something is on its way in the 3d welcome that that abundance now when our any moon is in taurus it is in its exalted uh position which means you're feeling extremely confident extremely in control and extremely good about whatever situation you're in right now when it comes to love and romance if you're looking for somebody new if you're with your lover there is a sense of something coming into being could be engagement rings could be wedding plans even though it's crazy to start any kind of plans right now but there is a sense of really feeling feeling confident feeling strong in what you have so that you know this is going to be long term i can see this going long term or we're getting more amped up we're going we're taking our relationship to another level of talking about moving in together something very 3d energy here pisces is you really feeling like you know the direction you want to move forward in and you're not afraid to step on that path you can see it tangibly coming to you and happening um, appreciate this moment. There you go. Every situation is an opportunity to grow and find love. And this is definitely, this card is uh, appreciate the moment, be in the moment. You feel very confident in the moment. You know, cause she's close to the surface. You know that even if it started out imaginary or online and we'll get into that because that's the other meaning for this card is somebody's watching you or talking to somebody at a distance or talking to somebody you know via skype via messenger via phone that kind of energy is um you you feel like it's close at hand you're really comfortable with it hold on so really feeling i don't know it's almost like feeling comfortable where things are right now that's what you, that, that's what it is. You feel comfortable with where things are right now. Um, I'd like to get into who is coming towards you, Pisces, or who you're dealing with and, and what they're thinking and feeling. But this is a nice place for you to be. A lot of confidence in your current situation. I feel like somebody's talking to somebody online. Who are you guys talking to? Is it just like Skype? Like almost feeling like this is good. This is a good place. I feel so warm and comfortable here. The distance isn't getting to me it's not harming me i feel safe with this person or i feel safe with the situation i'm really enjoying flirting with people online right now there's some sort of sense of distance here but you don't um not necessarily physical distance though um you 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 you, you, you you're almost you don't question the emotional validity of your connection or the place where you are right now Let's see who's coming towards you. This is really nice and confident energy for you guys. Um, you've been having a good time. I, I don't know. Generally speaking, this has been uh, an, a, a, this quarantine has been um, giving you that sense of safety, giving you that sense of of freedom that that only that only being blocked in could give you liberating you from all the other noise that usually fills you up we've talked about this before but this is definitely a sense of love looking real freaking good for you right now and i'm curious as to what's happening on the other side uh who is coming towards you let's go and see that link is in the description box below i'll see you guys over there aries what can you expect? What kind of love energies are you dealing with right now? So two, three cards came out for you. One, don't let your past hold you back. This is South Node energy. And I always say, check where your South Node is when these, this card comes up. You can do that through like astrologycafe.com or any one of these um, services that will generate a natal chart for you for free. Check to see where your South Node is because that tells you what was in your past life and what is so easy for you right now, but it could be your pitfall. It could be holding you back because you're succumbing to that comfortable place instead of pushing yourself toward that, that north node, which is in a zodiac sign that guides you. It's challenging. It's the 
the things in life that you find most challenging. But if you meet those challenges or aim toward those challenges and learn from that energy, you will actually achieve and become your best self. So find out where your South Node is because there is a sense of trying to figure out how you're holding yourself back um, because you're this close. It's almost like that last 10 pounds of losing weight type of energy. It's like you're this close to everything that you want. You're this close to everything being perfect. But there is a sense of something pulling you back. And that thing is you. That thing is you. And I think that you're doing some sort of self-exploration right now to try to understand and figure out like... Um, how am I holding myself back? Or I don't want to trip this up. I don't want to mess this up. Um, there's a potential here that I don't want to miss. So how do I make sure? It's almost like you're trying to really make sure that you don't mess something up. Even if it being totally single and just getting ready or preparing yourself or, or dating somebody new type of energy. Um, there is just this energy of going and being very self-contemplative and honoring your emotions and not backing down or judging them or being afraid of them, honoring your partner's emotions if you're dealing with a partner and really being uh, very patient and very calm because almost pedantic. You're almost being pedantic about what's happening right now because it's right on the precipice of it could fall backwards and mess up or it could go over and just be perfect and you don't, don't, don't want to be responsible. You just, you just don't want it to mess up so it's about owning it because you're so close to everything that you want you're so close but you still feel there's this little tiny bit of weakness so what you're doing is you're trying to calm yourself because you know if you don't calm yourself you'll overreact and that might actually end up blowing things up or pushing them in a direction that actually makes them go in the wrong way. So there is a little bit of a teeter-totter right here when it comes to romance for you guys. Um Hold on. Ooh. I think the issue is that you're not totally and completely in control of the situation. You're a little tiny, at least a tiny bit, um, at somebody else's mercy. And that does not work for you. It really doesn't. But at the same time, you care. And you want this to move forward and you don't want this to be messed up. Even if it's just the potential of like new people that you're dating, you just want to be sure that you don't hyperventilate or text too much or worry too much or, or dive in too fast or get too excited too fast. You want, you're trying to pace yourself right now so that uh, you feel some sort of control, um, at least over yourself, in a situation that you may not have much control over. So you might know that it's really up to them right now. If you're in a long-term relationship or you're dealing with somebody that like you already know, you've already started this energy with, there's a sense of understanding Aries and knowing that it's kind of up to them right now. It's, it's not in your hands and you don't want to push too hard. You're just trying to calm yourself down and respect their 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 move respect their next move right and and you're it's really it's a challenging circumstance but i'll tell you if we get some insight into what they're going through uh which is in the extended uh it might help a lot so have faith wow isn't that beautiful oh my god that's what all that that's what this whole energy is about it's about figuring out how to let go of those parts of yourself that you know will push you over the edge or that are too easy bad habits that are too easy for you to fall into that will make that might f things up so it's like you're just trying to calm down meditate understand those parts of yourself like maybe take time to learn a little bit more of those those uh caveats about your character those pitfalls you can fall into um, and and learn more about your north node if you know your south node you can easily find your north node because your north node or if you find your north node you can easily find your south node it is the direct opposite zodiac sign from your north node right like my north node is in virgo so my south node is in pisces because that's the counter sign when you look at the zodiac wheels so Find your North Node, find your South Node, and then pay attention to what those energies of those Zodiac signs are. Because this is a sense of you, if you use this time, Aries, to work on you, 
A, it's a demonstration of faith in this relationship. And B, it is a way to relieve the stress and energy of feeling maybe helpless or um, undesirable or feeling like you're, you, you just, you don't like this feeling. You don't like feeling like you're not in control. Like the decision isn't yours to make, but you know for a fact that it's not yours to make right now. So you just gotta find a way to feel like you're in some sort of control. And the only way thing we can ever control is ourselves, is learn about yourself, what can, how can you take this time to grow? How can you use it for personal development? It's really looking inward and, and working and doing that project and trying so desperately to take your mind off of, um, for most of mo your mind off of that, the per other person's decision, because you can't affect it. And honestly, if you don't have faith in them, you could be pushing them in the wrong direction. So you're just really trying to keep the faith. And this is a very encouraging card that says, have faith. This will work out. Everything will go the way that you need it to go and you will end up happy. Things are transforming right now. You can't control everything. Right now, you just have to sort of like let spirit take you in the direction that it's calling you. Um, let, let, let spirit take the wheel. Let, let Jesus take the wheel because um, that's, that's what this energy is. And look, it's the energy of 12, which is one plus two equals three, faith. Divine Trinity, Holy Trinity, balance, holy union. So there is hope here. Meditate, contemplate, and calm yourself down. You have to go with the flow here, Aries. Lots of times, especially as a cardinal sign, you want to dictate that flow, and that will push you in the direction you don't want to go. Let the flow lead you this time around. Let's get into what they're feeling, some insights into what your partner is going through or who's coming towards you. That link is below, Aries. I'll see you in the extended. Okay, Taurus. Let's see what the energies for love and romance are for you this week. Um, wow, you got a lot. You got a lot. Adjustments are required. So there is a sense of toggling, uh, needing to compromise or find that halfway point. Step out of your comfort zone. Every time somebody gets this Taurus, it's okay, what is your north node go find it go look for it go get get your natal chart you will need your there's a ton of free services online just google free natal chart it'll come up i recommend cafeastrology.com because i use them all the time i love it but there are a lot of different sites for you to choose some choose from go find your north node what you'll need is your full natal chart you'll need your time of birth, your date of birth, and your location of birth. That's what you'll need. You'll need all those things. And then you can find your north node. Find your north node. Always when this card comes up, find your north node. Find what you're supposed to be focusing on because I bet that the particular things that you're finding really confrontational or really hard in terms of finding a relationship or finding a partnership, um, those things that you always conflict with or feel like a barrier between you and somebody else, or where you're really feeling a conflict between you and your partner right now, have got everything to do with your North Node. And those qualities and traits in, your, in that North Node, the zodiac sign which your North Node is in, will probably be those most irritating and irritability kind of um, traits uh, in somebody else, but that's why it's in your life. That's why you kind of were attracted to this person. So they can teach you, so they can guide you, so they can challenge you and make you the best of yourself. Because if you allow yourself to be challenged by those characteristics of your North Node, you will ultimately become the strongest, most best version of yourself in this lifetime. Bring love into the situation. Yeah, essentially your partner is, oh, look at this deep purple. Look at that beautiful purple. I don't know if you guys are dealing with a purple. There's very a lot of passion. There's a lot of regality. There's a lot of luxury. There's a lot of abundance. So there's a lot of decadence here in your connection to somebody. And I really feel, Taurus, this is the energy of you realizing or or clashing with a person that you're really intrigued by and uh, maybe already in a relationship with and those you've chosen this person for a reason 
You've selected them because you want the challenge, because they have something to teach you. And I would not be surprised if it's got to do with that North Node. If you've fallen in love with somebody who is the sign of your North Node, so they can help teach you or guide you, or, or they have a major placement in the same Zodiac sign that your North Node is in, because you're looking for a teacher. You're looking for the challenge. You want to be the best of yourself and they are helping you do it, but there is definitely confidence here there is definitely something is rubbing you the wrong way adjustments are required having to figure out how to deal with each other how to live with each other how to compromise with each other how to understand each other um, a sense of maybe just maybe a friendship becoming a romance because there's love blooming but there's a lot of different things that you have to confront before this becomes official there's a lot of different maybe obstacles or yeah like things that you have to jump through or jump over, Taurus, in order to get to them. There could be some complications just in terms of maybe you're separate right now. Maybe maybe they're not in your vicinity or so maybe distance is an issue or maybe there are some obstacles like one or both of you still being in old relationships. Like there is, there is just definitely something that needs to be overcome and something that is challenging you, but there you... 100% you can feel it. You can feel the vibes. You know that there's something blossoming and blooming and extremely special in this current situation. Or if you're totally single, that's fine. And even if they are, there is a sense of you being absolutely positive that you want this to move into the direction of romance, but simultaneously there are obstacles. You know, like like your job, like your work, like this quarantine. There's just a need to compromise if you are going to welcome this love into your life. Uh, speak the language of, very interesting card that this came up for you guys. Speak the language of love, this is Gemini energy and it's the energy of eight, three plus five equals eight, so it's destiny. So it's a test, for you, Taurus. You have to figure out how to communicate with this person. You have to figure out what their language of love is and how do I speak it. So there is definitely something, somebody that you want to learn all about or somebody that you're already committed to learning more about because you want to, you want to understand like what's bothering them or or how come we're not we're not we don't not that we're not on the same page how come we're not communicating right it's almost like we're speaking two different languages what is their language of love right maybe you don't express love normally through through you do usually express love through, through gift giving and maybe that's not how they receive love maybe their language of love remember there's five languages of love go get that book go look that up google five five languages of love right um you like to give gifts but maybe that's not good enough maybe that's not what they want they want you to spend more time with them that's how they receive love well you have to learn that so you have to hold back on the gifts and and stop feeling like you're not appreciated because when you spend this money on them they're kind of like oh okay but I really wanted to just see you and spend time with you it's not an insult it's just that you're speaking two different languages of love and you have to learn their language of love and they have to learn your language of love so that you can realize and understand and confirm just how much you love each other because there is great potential here there's a lot of energy there's a lot of beauty there's a lot of regality there's a lot of meant to be and destiny in your meeting you two are both focused on the same thing you both have the same desire same focus you may be working at the same thing or you know in the same line of work same career there is that energy that that you know this is somebody who already impresses you you're extremely impressed by them but how did you speak to them how do you show them or or how do you receive love from them to let them know that the door is open for them to walk through that that you appreciate them as well there that's just what this is it's communication errors that's happening and adjustments have to be made you have to start listening and speaking in each other's language so what is this person thinking and feeling or who is this person that's coming towards you that taurus is in the extended video and we'll get into it. I'll see you guys over there. The link is below. Okay, Gemini. Let's get into your energy because this is really interesting. There's a lot of um Gemini. 
yeah yeah this is you um emotions are running high gemini the end of a tough cycle is here and expect powerful change what this seems to do is like it's like it feels it feels like a breakup it feels like an end it feels like something that has challenged you for quite some time and it's like it, it, it it's it's been difficult for you to let go of this is a fascinating person and i think that there was a lot of excitement at first gemini when you first met this person, when you first got into this relationship. And I think that that's part of the reason why you're having such a hard time letting go of it. It's like, it's like, it's like you're still holding on to what it used to be instead of what it is now. So there's a sense of, 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 um, you know, I don't want to let go based on what it was and how much joy I did get out of it. But there's a huge change coming. This is Capricornian energy. This is a sense of knowing what you want, laying down rules, setting down the law, timing, divine timing coming in. This is an eclipse, which always brings about huge change. And there's just so many emotions on both sides right now because it's very hard to let go of the situation that may have been going on for quite some time. There is, um, but there is, like I said, there is a sense, Gemini, that this is the right time. This is a time that things are changing. You don't want them to change. There is a sense maybe even of trying to avoid speaking about it so that you don't have to confront the change that's coming because you don't like the inevitability and you, you probably don't wanna be the one that makes a decision. You probably don't wanna be the one that speaks the words that, end or leave or walk away from you probably um you probably already know you feel it but at the same time there's a sense of not feeling comfortable with feeling it trying still working hard working slowly foot footstep by footstep to get closer to the change that you know is inevitable but this card tells me that even if you don't do it gemini the universe will come in and do it for you there is a sense of that um that inevitable goodbye, that inevitable change. Uh, but why do you want the change? There seems to be this 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 push toward ending something, and and it's not really you're not really thinking it through. There's there's still so many emotions there. There's still so much love there. There's still so much potential there. Um, somebody doesn't want to let you go. There's still an energy of well, then why why is it over with for you? Is it just your curiosity? Is it just a sense of you being bored or feeling stifled? could you talk to them about that could you could you maybe change could that be the change of of telling them and pointing out to them that you don't you just feel restricted and and oppressed and that certain behaviors have to change does the whole entire do you have to throw the baby out with the bathwater? that's sort of the question that i want to ask Gemini. Um, and, but I already feel like in some ways it's easiest for you to throw the baby out with the bathwater and you're not as attached to the baby as you should be, which is why you're not holding on to them and you're allowing them to go down the drain too. So there is also a confrontation of how much do you care? How much did you ever care? And not really wanting to look like the bad guy, um, not really wanting to look like the bad guy. And Gemini, you could be dealing with this energy too. It doesn't have to be just for you. It could be what you're dealing with and the person that you're dealing with. So you can always swap out these energies. Um, but there is a sense of how much do you really care about the baby if you're willing to risk them going down the drain with the bathwater. That, that, that's, it, it, it inevitably, inevitably things are going to change between you and this person you can't go back to the wonderful thing that it was and i think that that's what's really killing you inside is that whatever is happening right now has permanently changed the two of you for good and you can't go back to that age of innocence and enjoyment and that wonderful start that you had or the wonderful way now if you're totally single gemini this could just be you can't go back to the way you used to feel about love or the way you used to see love because whoever you just got out of a relationship with completely and totally changed how you feel about love itself and how you want love in your life so this gemini is definitely the end of an age of innocence an end of an era and an end that is bringing a huge change not only to the relationship that you're in but but or um 
um, future relationships that you could be in, but it's changing your relationship to love itself. It's just, you can't go back to where you were. And that's, what's really making you melancholy. That's what's making you sad. It's like what I had, it was so perfect. Why did it have to change? It was so right, but it did change and it, it's not going back. It's, there's a permanent change here. Even if you can use this to your advantage and you want to stay in a relationship, you're still not going back to that level of perfection that you had before. And that's really getting to you. So rest and relaxation is essential has come up for you. We all have a fundamental need to take a break. This is a sense of really needing, of feeling like, or really needing to feel like the, your person, it really needed to feel safe right now. That's what you need to feel. You need to feel protected. You need to feel guarded. You need to feel like somebody's got your back, not like you're being threatened. You need a relaxation time. You need a period to be away from and just sort of be covered and maybe just smothered in your blankets and then run and hide from the world for a while. You, you just, this is all too shocking for you and all too confusing for you. And there has to be a sense of you feeling comfortable with your emotions before you can even share them with somebody else. So you could be like, I hate to quote, I hate to quote Ross and Rachel, but on a break, you know, like that kind of energy. Um, but what's the inevitable end of that? I don't think, I think this, this break, this, this distancing yourself from love or from the one that you love is essentially just trying to avoid the inevitable, which is having to make a decision and having to accept that things have changed and they're not going back to what they were. So all this is, is I know you need it. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't take it for yourself, but it's just a delay and the problems, the change is permanent. So it's still going to be there when you come out of hibernation. So what's the point of this right now, except to delay the inevitable. And I think this is a little bit having to do with escape or somebody that you want to talk to Gemini is trying to escape you because they just don't want to confront or live up to what's really going on in them emotionally. Now, what is going on inside this other person? How are they going to react to your feelings or your emotions or requests? Uh, let's dive deep into that, Gemini, and see who's coming towards you and what's up with them. That link is in the extended below. Gemini, I'll see you over there. Cancer. Oh, I'm sorry about the wobbliness. Apologize. So, oh, let's do this, Cancer. Let's see. Curious, what is coming towards you in love and romance and sensuality for the next week or so? What is it? What is it coming towards you? Mm, and who is coming towards you is in the link below. So hold your vision. Mm, cancer. Wait, hold on. This is Cancer. Leo. Yep. Hold your vision. You are obsessively devoted to what you need the situation to be. You have decided, you've made a decision. What do you really want? What is really important to you in your life? But there is a level, there is a sense of what is it? What is it that's really important to you? There's a sense of you deciding that this is the relationship that's really important to you and that you're not going to let go. You're going to refuse to let go. You're going to hold on to whatever vision you originally had, the trajectory of being together, of what it's going to look like and how it's going to be, thinking that your choice and your focus can change the other person's mind. Now, in some cases, it may. In some cases, this may, especially if you're single, this may be exactly the energy that you need, Cancers. Right now is just know and believe and have complete and total faith and keep walking right. And what did I say to you? I've said this to you a dozen times, I know in extended readings especially. Hold your course and hold your vision if you're single, especially. Hold your course and hold your vision on what it is you love in your life. Let your life be a testimony and a celebration of love every single day because you are doing what you love and you are in the space of what you love and are you are you love yourself because of it and you are who you are out loud because that 
vision is going to take you to the person you are destined to be with. God gave you that vision for a reason, Cancer. They gave you that purpose in life for a reason. They don't want, God doesn't want you to be alone. They want you to be with the right person and they put those breadcrumbs in those passions so that when you follow your passions, you're actually following the breadcrumbs to the person you're meant to be with. So really stay fixed and hold the vision of what it is you love and feeling loved in your life. Keep true to it. You're on the path to it. Don't give up now. You're halfway there. You don't want to go back. You don't want to turn around. Even if you have just as much time to spend alone on the other side of this leg of the race is victory. So keep going because you, you just ran the hardest part because now you're headed toward the finish line, which is victory, which is finally getting to meet the person you're supposed to be with. Now, if you're in a relationship, this seems to be a situation of you being stuck, of you being absolutely determined. Maybe I shouldn't say stuck of you determining that I'm not going to give up on this. I'm not in a very cancerian way, making a decision to not give up on it and probably trying to justify way too much. You're going to have to get into that pattern of having to look the other way too much, having to make too many concessions. When you Cancerians get into this mindset, you will give up way too much in order to make it happen. And I tell you over and over again, Cancers, if you could just hold this focus on your career and your destiny, every president would be a Cancer. Every superstar celebrity would be a Cancer because when Cancers get into this mindset and what they don't realize is this mindset that they apply to relationships, insisting on a relationship working, not giving up, making it happen at all costs. If you would apply that to your career, we'd all be fucking billionaires. Because that works with career and 3D abundance. You know where it doesn't work? Relationships. Because relationships are two-way street and you, you, when you get into this mindset with relationships, you take too much on yourself and you make the, dis you become obsessive and you make the decision that you can make this relationship and you can't make a relationship, Cancer, because a relationship is a two-way street. So people have to be making it with you and you get into this mindset and you just sort of ignore too much you let too much go you just i just need this relationship and you end up really messing yourself up and messing up other aspects of your life that could have been perfect on point and winning you oscars or nobel prizes if you had just stayed your focus and guess what you would have met the right person if you had followed that course and that direction you would have met the person that God was leading you toward instead of insisting and obsessing on a relationship that you have to ignore too much for and do too much work for. So, but let's see what's this. Like attracts like. We get this card a lot. Now, two is the energy of being a little bit off kilter, off balance, something not completely working here. Right. And this is a sense of you could be dealing with another cancer. You could just be dealing with somebody who is exactly like you too much like you. This is a sense of your focus to turn determines your reality. So if you become this person who is insistent and only sees what they want and continues obsessively toward this relationship, then that's the kind of people that you attract and you wonder why you're never happy. But if you go gung-ho into your focus, into what you love, then you're going to attract somebody who lives in their true self, their nature, and their, their truth as well. And your truth and their truth just become one truth because you have a shared truth. So what kind of like, what kind of person do you really want to be with? Is it this person you insist on being with because they're the one closest to you? They're the one in front of you now? Or is it the person that you really have a soulmate connection with? Because this is a divine counterpart card. And this is a confirmation that a divine counterpart is sitting there waiting for you. But will you arrive? 
or will you stay stuck on this obsessive path that is going to lead you towards somebody who is just as obsessive as you are and there will always be conflicts um there will always be too much compromise and there will always be um just you'll, you'll be tricking yourself you'll be tricking yourself into love and pretending that you're happy and trying to convince everybody else that you're happy you're the, for the rest of your life so you make that decision because i promise you you make the right one you're going to end up with your soulmate let's see who's coming towards you let's see because this is a really important one to go into what's coming on the other side okay what you could be dealing with if you're in a current relationship now for singles this is easy this is easy energy why because it's like live your life live your truth stay on the course that you're on because in doing that you're attracting your divine counterpart the complication comes with this energy when you're in a couple because then it becomes you be, get it stuck in this sort of almost karmic cycle of just reattracting the same sort of a, like obsessive um i won't give up no matter what kind of energy it's like it's like you think that this will motivate the other person to care as much as you do it doesn't it just motivates them to be as obsessive insistent and self wrap, wrapped up in self as you are becoming you think you're working for this relationship. You're not working for this relationship. You're working for your sense of security and not wanting to be left behind. And that is fear driven and what we have to relinquish and let go of if we want to really uh, welcome in our divine counterpart. So it gets tricky with couples. The Who is coming towards you, what they're experiencing, what their mindset is, if you even still have a shot. All of that information is in the extended. That link is below. Cancer, I'll see you over there. Okay, Leo, let's go. Leo, a lot of cards fell out for you. So this is big time moon energy. And I know why a lot of the moon cards are falling out. Because we're about to be on a super moon. Super full moon this coming Tuesday. I did the Libra reading. Please see it. It's attached above the Libra full moon reading. You got to go get some, okay? Uh, yeah, you'll see the link. I'll attach it somewhere above or just look up, look, look in my channel because it's right up there. Um, it was a live, so it could be under my lives too. Uh, Leo, what does this mean? Luck is on your side. It's time to release negative energy. This is scorpionic energy. So this is very psychic energy, a psychic connection, maybe even a psychic, psychic assumptions or a psychic connection, connection that never really, a personal issue reaches a full resolution. You're dealing with two water signs, uh, Scorpio and Cancer. I don't know if this is the sign of your person, but this is definitely a, a, some, a sense of a communication or psychic connection of, of, of communicating or commuting on a psychic plane in the psychic realms of, of intuitively being able to connect with somebody. Luck is on your side. So your intuition could be telling you, um, that your person is finally ready to come around, Leo. Or your intuition could be telling you that you're like, yeah, like like almost giving you some sort of insight psychically into um, the right person to aim for or that this is the right time to have hope and know that things are going to be. In other words, it's timing. It's like divine timing. That's what this is. Um, yeah, the sense of the because maybe this person was going through oh you know what we'll discuss this more on who's coming towards you that's in the extended the link is below leo but maybe this person was going through their own conflicts this sense of uh i needed needing to let go of the past and hold on to old expectations and old relationships and now finally being able to take aim at the future this is sagittarius energy taking over of wanting something new of wanting to move forward Highly compatible energy for you, Leo. That fun, chaotic, energetic vibe that is Sagittarius. Almost a perfect companion for you. Because you will continue to provide.
provide them with fuel and they will provide you with constant fun and constant excitement. But there is a sense of needing to let go of the past, needing to let go of an old relationship, which if you know Scorpios or Cancerians, it's so hard for us to let go. It's just, it's, it's so, it's so heavy and it's so almost to you, you think it was idiocy. You know, it's like, why do you still want the past? But you know what? It's not necessarily that we want the past. It's that we want new hope for the future. And we are we get so comfortable in history, in the past, that it's almost like, when will we step that toe into where we need to be? So there's some sort of energy here. Either it's yours or the person that you're dealing with, an energy of... Um, Finally being able to let go of the past and prioritize and focus on the future. So this is really good energy for forward motion. Your, your uh, love life that could have been delayed may be taking some major steps ahead now. Because you finally like let everything out. You've shared all the feelings, you've shared all the emotions, and you've been able to sort of like start anew because you finally let the floodgates out and everything now is like the water's passed, um, the flood is over, and now you can um, start regrowing things and drying things off. There is a sense of immense freedom and forward motion, but also a target. Is setting your target, maybe even obsessively on somebody that you do not want to get rid of or let go of, knowing that this is the person that you belong to, they treat you the way that you want to be treated, or there, there is just, um, hey, I've decided on you and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to give up. A personal issue reaches resolution. It's time to release negative energy. You could very well have also been in a relationship, Leo, a sense of a relationship finally being over, being able to relinquish those, any, any, any relation. Any emotions that have negatively impacted your ability to make progress in your current relationship, or if you're not in a relationship, in relationships that are in future relationships. So this is um, realizing it, owning it, and allowing it to heal. It's time to release negative energy. A personal issue reaches resolution. Were you dealing with somebody else? Were you dealing with, were you dealing with an ex, an ex that wouldn't let you go? Or maybe even hatred or hurt or um, some sort of just not being able to forgive an ex or the energy that they left you with. And that impeding somehow or emotionally getting in the way, yeah, impeding. Um, <laughs> impeding your current relationship. Well, guess what? This is is finally coming out this is finally coming to resolution all of this is finally coming up out of the depths and being healed and finally being released and uh it's permanent understand that water signs hold on to things almost obsessively but once they let it go it's almost like it never existed I mean, and I explain this with this very Cancerian energy. Understand, uh, people always make fun of, of Cancers. They always say, oh, Cancers, hold on with those tight pinchers. Uh, crabs don't hold on with those claws. They protect. They defend themselves with the claws. They don't hold on. Uh, the way that Cancers hold on is think of the crab. The crab lives in a shell. And that shell... Um, you only molt that shell or shed that shell when a new life cycle is, is coming. Anything that gets stuck underneath that shell, that therefore remains there until you can finally grow enough to get rid of the whole shell. And then you release all of that irritant and you heal, you're finally able to heal. And it's like you're a whole new person. It's like they've never ever existed inside of you. Because now you have a new shell, you have a new inside, everything is new. So I try to like let people think it, uh, think about cancers more like that than like clinging with these claws because that's not really what it's about. So this is about something that you've held on to for a very long time, Leo, or something that your partner has held on to for a very long time. Finally being able to be healed, released, let go so that you can focus on your future together and make some decisions for your future. Uh, in love. Okay. Uh, what's this other card coming out? 
um, take a chance on love, moving forward, finding somebody that you want to take a chance on, finding somebody that is in sync with you, somebody that excites you, somebody that is traveling on the same path as you. So this person could be, um, this person could be, I'm sorry, my nose is itchy. Um, this person could be in the same career or same profession as you, but finally getting onto the same page and sharing the same vision, deciding where your focus is going to be, deciding and being able to finally take aim and share a vision, share and know that the two of you are in sync or meeting somebody that has a shared vision with you so that you don't have to worry. You Now you know. You know you're ready to move forward. Luck is on your side. It's finally happened. Leo, you finally decided where you want to move or which direction you're going, or maybe you're going to be traveling. Maybe the two of you are just going to take off and travel a lot. Maybe you're going to hit the road, or maybe this is just metaphoric for you having the same vision. Either way, you are betting on love. You're taking a chance on love because you've met somebody. You finally, the two of you both have that bullseye set in the same direction. And now you can now finally take aim together or trust that the two of you are finally on the same page, that you've met somebody who is on the same page as you. Holy crap, Leo, this is really wonderful energy for you. I'm trying to, hold on trying to organize these cards because when we go over to the extended, what are they going through? Like, um, who is coming towards you if you are just released old energy and just now been able to start focusing on love again? Who is coming towards you? Who is the first, who is this person that's coming into your life? Or what is your partner thinking and going through? All of that information, boop, down below, Leo. Um, I can't wait to see in the extended. Okay, Virgo, this is all about you and your love life this coming week. Like what energies are coming at you? Um, what is coming towards you in terms of love, sensuality, and romance this week, Virgo? You got... Nothing will come of this situation. Checking. Nothing will come of this situation. Void, of course. There is a sense of distance. There is a sense of release. There is a sense of letting go. There is a sense of a failure. But see, here's the thing. I have to clarify this card. Uh, like, like nothing will come of the situation void, of course, because it doesn't mean that you're breaking up. Ah, this card goes with it. Confidence is your key to success. If you have too much pride, if you are too insistent, there is a sense of you could really screw things up this week. You could be too harsh too uh, determined or a sense of you holding on to something from the past and nothing's ever going to come of it. Like there is a sense of having to love yourself enough to know that you have to let go. Uh, and this could be if you're in a long-term relationship, a wonderful long-term relationship, don't push the issue. Don't press the point. Don't insist on being right the whole freaking time. Why? Because it's really going to screw you up. Like a lot of conflict can happen this week because, you know, you're, you're because of uh, somebody being too critical, somebody being insistent, somebody being very prideful, somebody having so much confidence that they just insist that they're right and that they're uh, and they're not listening to the point where they're not listening. This will definitely throw you off course. This will de this has to be, be let go of. Your idea, whatever you made a decision was going to happen, let it go because it's almost like your plans are going to fall through. It's like the best laid plans. And Virgo, I know you like to lay those plans down, but the best laid plans are going to all go crazy this week. And it could really, 
really, really, really hurt your pride. That's what's going on. So what you really have to do is have enough confidence and faith in yourself to be able to let something go before it becomes painful or it becomes a tower moment and you're forced to let it go. Now, this does not necessarily mean the relationship itself. It's just, for me, what's coming through is argument, like an argument or, uh, yeah, or a belief or a desire. It's like, you're going to have to let it go. There's got to be some sort of concession or compromise this week because nothing's going to come of it. What, what do you expect? If you expect something to happen, there is a set, like you have so much confidence, you're just so certain that things are gonna go this way, that's what's gonna mess up. And it's gonna get on your last nerve because I know how you are, I know how you feel. I know how this kind of stuff affects you. It's like, but I planned on it, but I wanted it. And it's not happening. Hear the bell. That's, that's the irritation. And so the trick here to be successful in love and romance is to let go of the expectation. Just let it go. Don't expect, don't push, don't insist. Just be, have enough confidence in yourself to have faith in the universe to know that if it's not happening the way that you planned, it's because it wasn't meant to be. And you've just got to let it go for peace sake. Um, uh, partnership, right? Because because um, the full moon this week is in Libra. Check out your reading for Libra because I did the whole I did the whole zodiac. So check it out um, for the Libra full moon. I did two videos. There's a part one and part two. So um, check those videos out. But there is a sense Virgo of having to really understand the situation or circumstance of hear the things that are not being spoken, of, of something being hidden in your partner or hidden in yourself that's keeping you from a partner, but getting to the heart of the matter, uncovering the truth. You could very well be just um, um, like, which is why they're saying, let it go. Let, let your pride go because it's almost like you don't know the complete story of what you're dealing with. You don't, you don't know everything that you think you know. And I know you're so certain when you think you know something, but there's something going on beneath the surface that you're not completely aware of, which is what's throwing everything off of course and why you need to not insist that you do know everything or that everything or insist that everything is set in stone because it's not, there's a curveball coming at you, Virgo, in terms of love and romance. There's a sense of maybe obligation, family obligation on your partner's side. Or something that they didn't tell you about them. This is a new relationship. Something that they didn't tell you about themselves. Or uh, throwing throwing like a chink in your chain. A, a total curveball came out. Like you didn't know that they felt this way. Or you didn't know that they thought about things this way. Or this is an unexpected aspect to their character. And their sense of self. That throws you off course. That, that, that almost like throws you off completely. Like wait. This is a curveball. How do I deal with this one? It's But it's got to do with expectations versus reality. So the secret to success here, once again, Virgo, is completely and totally relinquish all expectations this week and be prepared for curveballs because they're definitely coming at you, especially if you're in a long-term partnership, but also just in romance in general, just in love in general, especially if you thought like, something was happening between you and somebody else, like there was a new romance bl uh, blooming, um, uh, there's something that's going to be thrown off today, like family obligation or finding out that they have kids and they have to spend time, like, like something is going to throw the chink in what you thought was a perfect setup, that kind of energy. Um, um, but this is all about finding the compromise on the other side and listening to the other party and, and, and making their feelings or their needs be a priority, not necessarily just a priority, but letting them be on the table. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, that kind of energy, of course, this could all uh, flip and be your energy, the energy that you're, that's coming at you that you're dealing with. Um, Hold on, let me see if I'm getting any more from these cards. There is more going on than meets the eye. It's ground, it's, 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 cur it's curveball energy. Something is coming out to, th to throw you completely off. And you have to have enough self-esteem to know that it's not about you. It's not about you, it's about them. It is. And I know it says it's not me, it's you. 
but Virgo, it really is. It's about them. So the curveball is coming maybe in your partner's life or from a person or finding out something, something about somebody that you're interested in that you didn't realize was a reality about them. Please have faith in yourself, in your sense of self, and, and have enough courage and a strong enough sense of self, Virgo, to not feel diminished or thrown off when things don't go the way that you plan. Like let go of the plans this coming week. That would be the best course for you to take. Let them go because then you don't have to run interference type of energy. Now, what is going on with this person? What are they hiding and what is coming out? We're going to go over to the extended and delve much deeper into this. Who is coming towards you and what are they dealing with? Virgo, that link is below. I'll see you guys next week. Or I'll see, I'll see you guys in the extended. Libra, okay. 128 to 28. Uh, that's when I started your reading. So that's a number of divine counterparts. So there is a sense here of a major partnership. And remember, the full moon this week is in your sign. So Libra, this is all about partnerships, this energy. There's so much heightened sense of partnership that is, is just sort of broadening you, expanding you. But there is a sense right now that there is... Um, basically an, um, a need to really focus on what it is that you need, what it is that you expect from partnerships so that you can get into a sense of real balance and not a state of constant compromise. So a time for healing, balsamic, this is one of my favorite cards. It's so beautiful. It's so romantic. This is an implication that Maybe you're in a long-term relationship, you're in a relationship, and the two of you have been through a lot together. The two of you have really now finally have an opportunity to um, make amends and heal your relationship or heal from a relationship that has been broken. There is a sense of also personal healing going on, Libra. What do you need from a relationship and having the strength to know that you have a right to need it? This is also being able to heal you, you and your partner. Take care of the two of you. Take care of the partnership itself. Not you, not them. Remember the scale, right? The two sides of the scale. There's you, there's them, and then there's that middle point upon which you both hang. So you're, just, you're finding and really solidifying what that middle is so that the two of you can be back in balance because when one's off balance, the other is off balance. And there's a sense of coming back into a state because true health is the state of balance. It's being balanced. That's what being in a healthy relationship is about, being in a balanced relationship, a relationship where there is fairness on both sides. So Libra, hands down, this is a time for you to come back into balance. And that is the time when love is the brightest for you. When you are balanced, when you feel good about yourself and good about the world, when you believe in love again, but you also believe in yourself. This is a time, this is a great time, especially if you're single, to be a Libra because this implies that you are healing yourself that you are healing up those past hurts, that you are forgiving and let go of any kind of disappointment you held on to from the past. Maybe you're forgiving your current partner, you're understanding them, you're being able to talk with them. Both of you are able to talk this out. Balance is coming back into your romantic life. This could imply that you haven't had a partner in a very long time or that you were with a, a wrong partner for a very long time. Something has been thrown off, way off whack, and it needed to be counterbalanced big time. And you're finally gotten to that point where the counterbalance is here. You're in a healthy place. Hold on. Oh, I love this. Spend 
quality time together. Listen and talk to each other. The energy of 46, 4 plus 6, 10. Maturity, maturation, a conclusion, finally being able to meet somebody. Maybe you've been waiting for a partner to come into your life, Libra. You're finally going to be able to actually know who they are. They're finally entering your life. You're going to get to spend a lot of time with your partner. And I think this card implies that part of the issue, the imbalance, came from the two of you being separate, spending too much time apart, or having too much responsibilities in your life and not spending enough quality time with each other. This is the two of you finding each other again, finding each other physically, spending that physical time with each other. That's what's balancing the two of you out of being able to finally prioritize your relationship again, of finding that middle ground and prioritizing the relationship between you and not just one over the other or responsibilities all around you. Spending quality time with your partner is going to go so far with this energy. It's just such a simple secret. And yet it's almost like if we're in quarantine, this is going to work out for you because that's what was missing. What was missing was, do you see the two new moons? This is almost like healing so that you have a new beginning and making that new beginning be start with the two of you being able to prioritize the, the, your time together, not your time with the kids, not your time with the family, not your time with your friends, not your time at work, your time with the two, uh, with, with the both of you. Being able to really prioritize that partnership is going to heal you so much. The pain that you've been feeling, the discomfort, the relationship issues, spending this time together is actually going to pull everything back into focus and back into balance and give you a new start. Now, if you are totally single Libra, then believe it or not, you are meeting that person. That person is coming into your life. You've been single too long and what you need is some real physical touch. Real, like really, you just knew you, you need that physical partnership in your life. And I think finally the balance starts in your own mind where you realize it. I need a partner. I do. I may have really been thriving on my own, but come on, I'm a Libra. I need this partnership. I need to be with somebody. I rule the seventh house. It's so important for me. It's who I am. It's part of my identity to be, not just identify your whole self with your partner, but part of your identity is partnership. So it's not just about giving good advice to your friends. It's about taking your own advice and applying it so that you now finally get to be in an actual physical, realized relationship. Who is coming towards you, Libra? What's going on with them? Great questions. That's over. Please press the link below and head on over to go grab the extended. Libra, I can't wait to have you know. I will see you over in the extended. Bye, guys. Uh, okay, so let's wrap up this video really quick and just say, let me say thank you so much for spending this time with me. Um, I really appreciate it. I do hope you all go over to the extended uh, and that you enjoyed this reading. Please remember to like this, this uh, video and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys in the extended. Bye.